Hello, this is Distracted Lord, and welcome back to the Lost Echo SMP. And really, I'm just try I'm trying to head down to my new city. Except there's stupid things in the way. Really? You're not even supposed to be able to spawn here. They're, they're literally. As I was going over there, there were a few in the way at the exact same spot. I like having the torches, it's very cool. Even just for the fact of it lets me see that I'm about to I'm about to hit the start. Well, the end will start depending on which we're going. But as we go through the portal, you'll be able to see that I've done something here. This is right, I've put a bit of a building in place. And this This is Gilded Blackstone. I love Gilded Blackstone. It's it's basically just my channel colours in the block. It's the it's the black and it's the black and gold. Hang on, I need to take this off. It's the black and gold that's on the back of my thing and it's covered up by my hair because I'm smart and I made my skin very well. So this here will be the waypoint. Um, it's not one yet. I've also built pretty much the exact same thing. Just a Gilded Blackstone with some stairs around it at my base. And at some point I'll get Phantom to come along and actually deal with it and make it a proper waypoint. But this is the little building I've got. This is the fairly standard template for what I'm going to be doing. There is a torch there to light it up because it's too dark, because we don't have light blocks, because they're not in survival. Hashtag craftable light blocks. But this this is just a sort of ten bucks for my house. It's very similar to the Enchanted Bookshop, just without the enchanted stuff. So there's some glow lichen, it's got the same block palette really. It has if I can actually get a distance away from it, it has the same roof but with edging of dark oak. Um, I might go and add that to the bookshop if I can be bothered, just have this chest full of the stuff I was using to build it, and of course I'm going to need more, because I always need more, and I do actually have more of most of these things back at base. This looks a bit funky, that's sort of how it is, there should, normally I would put a roof around here and have a second floor, but I didn't, and I might actually do that, that might look better. I've needed things up a little bit, and I've cleaned that out from there, and put a floor in, and by needing things up, I mean I shoved it upstairs, when no one's going to see it. So there's just a lantern here, which is moved from down here. It's still all illuminated, it's fine. I kind of want to put two blocks of obsidian just in there and there to make things look a bit squarer, I'm going to be honest. That is slightly annoying. I kind of want to make it wider as well. Yeah, I'm just going to make the portal bigger just so that it fits in better. Because I have the obsidian. So while I'm at my base, I should probably mention a couple of things I've changed around here. So, yeah, I've got some furnaces. Because I went off mining to get myself some tough and some glow lichen. Because, yeah, I've also added more chests. Because I ran out of space in the one chest I was storing in. But actually all my tough and glow lichen is over my other place because I need loads of it. And glow lichen's a pain because it requires shears. And so I just made a set of proper shears, which are efficiency 5 mending and breaking 3 shears. Because I'm going to need them if I ever want to use shears. But that's, that's something I've done. And then while I was out there I got lots of copper. And of course I picked up with my silk touch pickaxe and got home. And found that I got halfway through mining and it filled my inventory. And so I smelted it. And now I have almost four stacks of copper blocks, which is kind of ridiculous. But to smelt it, I had to make this, because the three I had before, trying to smelt almost 36 stacks of raw copper would take so long, and I would have to keep changing these around, and so I just shoved this in here. So this is this is the, um, the lazy approach to a large smelting array. There's the high effort version, where you have minecarts and or hopper minecarts and automatic fueling systems and you just shove it on a chest and it does it all for you which has a much higher startup time or there's the lazy approach which I've done which is just have a bunch of them and just fill them all and earlier I had them all going and it was pretty cool and very bright but now I have a ton of copper and I don't know what I need to do with it because I don't even know what I want all the copper for I just while I was there I mined it and now I have loads of the stuff what I like to do is, whenever I have the option, I just convert 1000 EXP when I have it. 
and put it in here. So yes, that's right, I have 41 experience coins, each at a value of a thousand. Yeah, so you see I've just got this thing that will be a teleporter nicely in the middle of my courtyard, much closer than the portal, which is very nice. And now I can get the flint and steel, which I left upstairs. And boop, we're connected back to the nether. There we go, much neater. So yeah, this is the first of my houses. And I will have a path that comes out here. And I might have to do something about a very steep hill right here. There's probably actually going to be quite a good amount of terraforming going into this project. And from there, I can have some paths going out. There's going to be a few houses along the waterfront going around here. Um, over this way. I know this hill's a bit awkward. I'll either build something on top of this hill, looking down at the water, or I'll just demolish the hill. Because I can't really be bothered to demolish the hill. But yeah, I could have a couple of buildings on top of this hill, with like sort of their own paths going down to little fishing jetties sticking out into the water. And over here, I don't know, maybe it, I might not build diagonal houses because I'm really bad at building on diagonals whenever I try it, it looks awful. But we can have some buildings along here. And there's like a path that goes behind them with some taller buildings behind it. That way, when you're over in the water, you see depth. I'm so imagining having buildings up here and then buildings along the front here and then sort of taller buildings standing up behind it and jetties sticking out of the water. At some point I might even build some boats. I've always wanted to build a boat. I don't think I'll be very good at it, but I'm going to try. So I built a path and it goes to the ends of the field, but the recording did a funky thing and so it's not available for use. Uh, you'll see it in the next clip. Uh, I just don't mention it. A building has now been built. It's not particularly exciting really. Fairly standard building. And I put in this path down the side because I realised that having lots of fishing jetties isn't exactly useful. You kind of going to need this sort of main jetty which boats can dock at. So it's going to be one of those that's going to go out fairly far into the bay. And then there's a little fishing jetty going to be next to it, that sort of thing. Um, this house has a balcony up there, which is it's interesting feature. Balcony has got a pretty cool view. That's about it. So more houses are going to need to be built with more interesting features than this one. I am going to put in like bushes and grass and just things lying around to actually make place or to bring it all together. But I don't want to do that until I've actually got the houses in. Otherwise I'll find that stuff is in the way. So what I need to do is build all the houses up, then I can do the funny detailing stuff. And that will be cool. But that is gonna be it for this video, so thank you for watching. Don't get distracted, go subscribe now and until next time, goodbye.